What's going on, mathletes? Alan here again. Just wanted to uh, go over some oblique triangles and the law of signs with you all to get you going on this next unit of study. So let's get started. So first of all, we need to talk about what an oblique triangle is. And basically that is our fancy math term for something that is not a right triangle. Now that kind of throws a wrench into things because obviously all the topics that we've been dealing with from the early onset for SOCA, TOA on all of our trig functions, it was imperative and only worked if we write triangle. And so now we're gonna be dealing with non-right triangles, again, called oblique. And we're still gonna be wanna, able to use our trig functions in we're gonna to have to see a different way and a different use of how those happen. So a few attributes uh, that I wanted to talk about with triangles in general. And so just a couple of things here to mention. We hopefully remember that the sum of all the angle measures of any triangle is, hopefully you said, 180 degrees. Now we're also gonna be talking about how to solve a triangle. And if you were to think about what that means, usually we're solving equations. That usually is finding the unknown or unknowns, depending on how many there are. Um, in algebra, it was typically an X variable. So to solve a triangle means same thing. Find all the unknowns. And in this case, any triangle is made up of three triangles and also therefore three sides. So to solve a triangle means to find all angles and sides. And in order to find a triangle and solve it, all of its missing parts, we need to at least have one side and any other two measurements. So basically what we need to have are three pieces of our triangle, including one side in particular. As long as we have that, then we can solve that triangle by finding the other half of the unknown parts, whether that be two sides and one angle or what have you. So in this case, we're gonna talk about all the different scenarios that could happen. And therefore, we're gonna talk about when there was only one side. And so I'm calling that case number one, okay? Now, when you read these, it depends on how you draw it and everything else. So I said clockwise or counterclockwise. In order to solve these things, again, we need to have at least one side. So if we have two angles and a side in any order, angle, angle, and then a side, or an angle and then the side in between another angle. That will allow us to solve for the missing parts. And again, we're always gonna be have to be given half. So we're gonna have to find the other half, the other three pieces. Now, if you look at number two, what if we had two sides and one angle? Now we like to call this an included angle when it's in between. So we say side, angle, side. And some of this may sound familiar for when you were dealing with geometry way back when and trying to find congruence between two triangles, whether they were congruent, meaning virtually the same, but just not in the same place or labeled the same way, but all the sides were the same and the angles were the same. These were some of the criteria that were needed in order to do those. Now, this other one, um, I kind of put a little twist on it. I call it ASS because this has a special case that we'll talk about. Most books will use SSA for obvious reasons because they don't wanna spell curse words within their book and give anybody a reason to not buy it. Um, so I like to use ASS and I'll talk more about that in the next video in the next section for our text, but um, that's when we have two sides and one angle. And then the third scenario is three sides. Now notice there is one scenario that is left out and that is angle, angle, angle. 
because remember we said that the requirement is we have to have at least one side in order to solve these because angle 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 will only work in, a, in order to find similar triangles okay so unless you're going to need car insurance we cannot use AAA. all right so at least one side and we'll talk about all these different scenarios and go through a few examples to make sure that we understand how to find these but before we do if you remember the title was not only about oblique or non-right triangles it was also about this thing called the law of signs so the next thing i'm going to talk to you about is deriving that law of signs so let's say we had a non-right triangle aka oblique and i was able to take this triangle abc and from the highest point i'm calling it c i was able to drop a perpendicular okay perpendicular making it a right triangle i'm actually even going to call this h because that would be the height of this triangle because if you're going to find your height you would want to stand straight up and down or perpendicular to the ground so in this case when we label these things we typically want to put what the sides are according to the angle that forms it so if i'm looking at angle a you can see it has that upper left side here and this lower bottom base side here and so what forms this angle a is those two sides which means it also forms this side over here so what we're going to call that is lowercase a capitals will be used for angles lowercase letters will be used for sides so opposite angle b right here would be formed by these two sides and so it would create this other or third side over there which we're going to call lowercase b and then from here to here would be lowercase c and obviously that is the hardest one to see because capital and lowercase look very similar so just overemphasize the capital letter and notice angles uppercase sides lowercase all right so i dropped that perpendicular so now that i have a right triangle because remember that's the only way that our trig functions work is with right triangles the only one i can't use is angle c because i just broke it into different parts and i took angle b in that right triangle and i found remember this is called the law of signs the sine of angle b and the sine of angle a well, remember sine we used sokotoa to remind ourselves of what sine was and that was the opposite over the hypotenuse so if i'm looking at angle a the opposite of that would be h and the hypotenuse which is opposite the 90 degree angle always would be letter b and if i did the same thing for angle b the opposite of it would also be the height of this triangle and the hypotenuse would be side a and you notice the one thing that these two equations have in common is the letter h and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply both sides of each of these equations by the denominator in this case b to cancel that out and get what h is equal to here it's b times the sine of angle a and then over here i'm going to have to multiply by a and i get h is equal to a times the sine of b and since that h is the same same length same letter then we know that these two things are equal here and here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just set those equal to one another since they are and then i'm going to try to make these look a little bit nicer by dividing both sides of this equation to get the signs by themselves so in this case on the left i'd have to divide both sides by b and then on the right side i'd have to divide both sides by a and that would then cancel these to be a one and these to be a one and hopefully you notice what we're left with is sine of angle a over little a 
equals the sine of B over side B. And that, my friends, is what is called the law of sines. Now, again, this is just one case. If I was to rewrite all of my letters over here, the A, the B, and the C, and I reordered them, then I could also find this exact same thing was equal to the sine of angle C over side C. So we're going to extend this to be any pair of these. Okay, And this is what is called the law of sines. Now, hopefully it looks a little bit familiar because what I originally had here is called a proportion, when a fraction is equal to another fraction. And as always, what do we need in order to ever solve an equation? Well, we need as much as we possibly can get. So the only thing we cannot have is either little a, little b, angle a, or angle b. We need to know three out of those four pieces. Now again, if I wanted to take these two, for example, or even get rid of this one and just look at the A's and the C's. It really depends on what you're given, okay? So this one right now is set up for me to be able to find angles because I put the angles on top. If I wanted to know sides, then I would reverse this and I would have put little a over the sine of a is equal to side b over the sine of angle b or any of those two with little or side C and the sine of angle C. This or that can be used, okay? And when should you use what? Well, hopefully you remember I just mentioned this you would use to find a side. This over here on the right would be used to find an angle, and that's because what we have on top. It's just much easier to solve when we have it that way, okay? So that is the derivation or proof. And so here very quickly is the formal way of writing it. Now again, hopefully you notice the only things that we have available to us are two of them at a time, okay? And of those four parts, we're going to have to know three of them, and then we will solve and find the fourth. So right now, this is set up to find side lengths. If we wanted to find an angle, we would put the angles on top and flip everything as it's reciprocal. All right. So that is the law of sines. Let's make sure we know how to use it. So here's example two, more of a word type problem. But you can hopefully see that, again, they gave us two angles and a side. It says an engineer wishes to measure the distance across a river. Now, this one would have had a graph. And there's my fancy river. All right. And then within that, I'm going to draw a triangle for one point at one edge of the river all the way across to another point, which I'm going to call angle C. And then if I'm on this side of the river, I'm actually going to walk some distance over here. And I'll call that point A, because I can physically measure that. Okay, so if I have this drawing here, which you guys would have been given, you don't have to guess on this, okay? Then obviously what we are going to do is draw so that we create a triangle. And notice it is not a right triangle. Not all rivers are straight, especially along the edges of the river. And so what we're trying to find is this distance right here, which instead of calling it X, I could also call it little a, because I can see that I have angle a that formed that. And they also told me that that measurement right there is 28.8 degrees. They also told me that this big one here, this obtuse angle, which is 117.2 degrees, and they also told me little b, which would be this side length here, is equal to 75.6 feet. So if you were to label this, what would you say it is? What are we given? And hopefully you can see that we have an angle, side, 
angle situation. And like we mentioned, as long as we have one side, we should be able to solve this. And what are we trying to solve it for? Hopefully you said side length A, which means I know I need to have angle A, which I have. So already I know I'm gonna be using little a over the sine of a, which they gave us was 28.8 degrees. But remember, I need that good ratio. I need both a side length and an angle length that are the same letter. And if you look at what they gave us right here, I have A, C, and B. So they didn't flat out give us what we needed in order to find this. But hopefully you notice just like the previous example, we have two angles. And therefore we know the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So we can do just like we did in the previous example and add those two angles up to find angle B. And once we have that, then we can use the other thing that they gave us, which was side B. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up already as 75.6 feet over the sine of angle B. And that's the angle that I need in order to finish this. So in that case, I'm gonna go ahead and take, and I'm going to add up the two side lengths that I already am given, and that is angle A plus C, which is 28.8 degrees and 117.2 degrees. And when I add the 0.8 and 0.2, that gives me a nice even 10, and that would give me eight and eight, which is 16, and four for 146 degrees. So I can now find angle B by taking 180 and subtracting 146 from it. And when we subtract, again, if you wanna borrow, that's fine. That would give me four, three, zero, so 34 degrees. So I can now take that and input what I know. Now again, notice I have three sig figs, four and three. So a minimum of three, so I can't give them any more. I can't give them four because two of my things only have three. So with all of these measurements in tow, we're gonna go ahead and take this and we're going to multiply over by the sine of 28.8 degrees to both sides. So that this cancels out and I have my length A, which would be the distance across this river without actually floating. Because as you know, there's current that plays into this. And it'd be very difficult to go straight across. So this allows us to do things that we wouldn't physically be able to do sometimes without even creating a right triangle that also may not be obtainable. So in this case, I go to my calculator once more and I will take my 75.6 times the sine of 28.8 and then take that and divide it by the sine of 34. And that gives me 65.130, which again, we only had three sig figs. So the best that I can give them is three back. And that would be 65.1 feet across the river. Didn't have to solve the whole one on this. So make sure that you read and that way you don't have to do extra work if it's not necessary. How do we find the area of a triangle in general? And hopefully you all remember that from geometry. Pretty simple. To find the area of a triangle, it was always one half times the base times the height. Now that required a right triangle because without a right triangle, we didn't have the height. All the triangles that we've been talking about in this section have been what are called oblique. So what if I asked you to find the area of this? Could you still find the height of this thing and go through and solve? Of course, but then you'd need to know the base again and all of that. So we're gonna derive a way so that we don't have to find all these things. We can use what is given. 
And so in this case, I'm going to label side length A, B, and C, just like I did previously. And then this would be what is called the height. Okay. So what I'm going to do is actually find the area of this given what we already have. And as you remember, we needed one side and any other two things in order to solve it. Very similar in this case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what I already know the area is, which is one half the base times the height. And I'm going to go ahead and set this up so that right now the base of this big triangle would be letter C. And the height of this would actually be letter H. The problem is we're not always going to be given this. So what I want to do is solve for H. And as you can probably guess already from our other derivation, by dropping that perpendicular to find the height of this thing, I can either use A to solve for H or I can use angle B to solve for H. So yes, just like the law of sines, there's going to be multiple options for this. So I'm just going to take angle A since it's the first letter in the alphabet. And I'm going to rewrite this as one half. And then I'm going to take the C and I'm going to rewrite my H. So right now, I'm going to solve this using angle A. And because it is a right triangle, I'm going to say that the sine of angle A is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And since I want to solve for angle H, or excuse me, length H, I will go ahead and multiply over by B. And you can see there that those will cancel out. And now I have found H is equal to B times the sine of A. And since that's what H is equal to, I can then substitute that in here because that's what H is. So I will put B times the sine of A. And hopefully you can see why this is also in this section, even though it's kind of separate from the law of sines. So now hopefully you notice that I've come up with a new equation for my area of a triangle. It's still got that one half, but now I'll put it in alphabetical order. It'll be B times C times the sine of A. And that is just one variation of this. Now I'm not going to solve it for all of them and all the different lengths, but I do want you to notice that what scenario would we have to have in order for this to work? Right now it's saying little b, side length b, little c, side length c, and angle A, which is here. And so what kind of abbreviation scenario would this be? It would be a side angle side. So this equation works when we have side angle side. We say an included angle because it's between my two sides. So if we ever have this, we don't even need to find the height. We can just take and multiply this out and get our area of a triangle. So pretty nice. It allows us to skip some steps. So there it is with all three versions. So again, if you just want to draw a triangle out so that you can see what's given there and then label it in any order, does not matter. Little a here, little b there, and little c there. Then you can see, hopefully, that for each one of these, b, c, and a would be b, c, and a, the one that I just derived for you. But if you look at the other ones, I have a, b, and its included angle, A, B, and its included angle, side, angle, side. And then same thing here, A, C, and its included angle. So as long as you have side, angle, side, you can use this formula and very quickly find the area of that triangle without doing extra work.